New research has given a clearer picture of how much radioactive material was released from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and when. The nuclear accident occurred on March 11, 2011. The most critical period was believed to have been the first four days, but the new analysis suggests that it was the period after that which caused the most serious damage. Fukushima Daiichi was rocked by hydrogen explosions and nuclear meltdowns during the first four days. Researchers at the Japan Atomic Energy Agency collected new data on radiation detected near the plant. They analyzed how the radioactive materials were released into the air. Starting on the evening of March 15th, a massive amount of radioactive materials was released, seriously contaminating the immediate area. From the night of the 20th, radioactive contamination spread as far as the Kanto region, which includes Tokyo. The research found that 75% of the radioactive substances were released after March 15th. Previous surveys had focused on the first four days when the situation was deteriorating out of control. The government's investigation has not determined the cause of the massive release of radioactive substances following that period, and researchers also have no clear explanation. We need to analyze thoroughly the mechanism of the massive leak for such a long period. First, we have to take precautions to prevent a recurrence. Then, we should come up with countermeasures against possible accidents. The Fukushima disaster has been evaluated as the worst at level 7, on a par with the Chernobyl accident in 1986. More than 120,000 people are still forced to live in temporary shelters. Six municipalities remain off limits due to high levels of contamination. When the disaster hit, the nuclear plant lost its external power. That made electric pumps for injecting water into the reactors useless. So workers used fire engines to spray water into the reactors to keep them from melting down. The fire engines pumped out 30 tons of water every hour. But an in-house investigation by the plant's operator shows only about one ton per hour reached the targets. We conducted an experiment to see if this may have contributed to the massive release of radioactive fallout. Nuclear fuel is covered with a metal called zirconium. We heated the metal to a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius, the estimated temperature inside the reactors when the accident happened. We then poured traces of vapor onto the metal to simulate water from that fire engines. Instead of dropping, the temperatures of the metal quickly began to climb. In two minutes, it surged by 78 degrees. Experts suspect this is why large amounts of radioactive substances escaped over an extended time. Fuel keeps melting slowly as zirconium generates a relatively large amount of heat. The metal remained hot for some time. This means radioactive materials will be released for a longer time. The experiment shows the water that was meant to prevent the meltdowns may have actually sustained them. The expert says the result shows that radioactive substances kept leaking out and spreading into the atmosphere. NHK World's Kenichiro Okamoto has been following the story and tells us what he has learned. Several independent panels investigated the accident. Some were appointed by the government, others by the diet or private groups. The members tried to figure out why no one was able to control the situation. They focused on the four to five days after the disaster, when TEPCO failed to prevent the reactors from melting down. 
Radiation levels around the Fukushima Daiichi reactors remain extremely high, and no one has been able to get close enough to determine what's happening inside. And it's possible there may still be more data to analyze about radioactive substances released from the plant. This explains why experts believe it will take several decades to get a complete picture of what happened. In the meantime, everyone needs to keep in mind that no nuclear plant is perfectly safe. And members of the media need to keep watching the situation and report on future developments as they happen.